uh, like the title says, we're going to cover over 100 bank tips to catching cats. Uh, we're going to cover everything from where to locate the cats from the bank in the summer, spring, fall, winter, how to locate the bait in, in all the seasons, how to catch the bait. Uh, we're going to go over all the different rods and reels. Uh, I'm not biased, so I'm going to have honest you know, rod and reel assessments. I've used cheap ones. $25 to reels and rods that cost $250, $300. So I've caught fish in all of them. Started off with spinning reels, now I use bait casters. Just my preference. Uh, they both catch fish, they both can cast far. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to tune your reels to get your baits out up to 100 yards farther. It takes maybe 60 seconds to do. Uh, then I'll show you how to cast. You know different techniques to get your baits out you know, up to 100 yards seriously uh, we'll cover the different types of rigs uh, different types of baits to use, how to cut your bait up to 10 different times, 10 different ways. Might not seem important, but you know, different bait selections on how you cut it, how you use it, when you use it, what time of the year to use different cuts of bait work. Uh, over hooks, lines, uh, pretty much everything you can think of. I mean, I got tips, all kinds of tips that I'll show as I, you know, keep fishing. And by far, biggest one is weather. Um, weather is the reason why I'm fishing where I'm at today. It's the reason what bait I'm using. It's the reason where rods, reels, uh, even the rod holders I'm using depends on the weather. As you can hear, I got some north wind today. And usually when it's really windy in the winter, I fish shallow, uh, which is, can be a shocker to a lot of people. But usually when it's south wind, um, the weather, you know, usually it, it go depending on what, you know, what your winter is. So this is a normal winter day in Texas. I'll say, you know, it's like 50s in the daytime and use at nights gets in the 40s, high 30s. So that's a normal day. Now, if I look in the calendar and I see in three days, uh, you know, I look at the weather app and I see three days from now, it's going to be 65 and it's going to be winds. 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. I can't say it enough. The wind is your friend. The wind is your friend. The wind is your friend. The stronger the wind, if it's 40 miles per hour, you want to be catfishing. Don't matter how strong it is, you want it so you want the wind blowing so hard that you can barely hear the person next to you talking. So if I see in the winter, you know that uh, you know in a couple days. It's going to be 65 degrees. It's going to be warmer than usual. And it's going to be some south wind, 10 to 20, 10 to 15. I'm going to fish shallow. Now, in the morning, I'm going to start deep because uh, the water is still going to be cool. cool. So I start deep in the morning. But about 12 o'clock, that sun, what's going to happen, it's going to heat the top layers of the water up and the shallow water up. Now, that south wind is going to blow that, that warmer top water. And uh, it's going to blow all that, that warm water, to the bank. So you want to be fishing on the bank where the wind's blowing to you. Now the winter day, it's gonna heat that shallow water up uh, way warmer. So the shad, you know, the plankton, the shad will follow, the cats will follow. So at about 12 o'clock on the day in the winter, when it's warmer than usual, you got soft wind, you wanna fish shallower. Uh, now, that's one of the main reasons why you will see that I have these big rods. You know, a lot of people say, well, you got these big old rods, you know, you don't need those big rods, you know, these reels. Well, the main reason is one, to get it farther. You fish lakes, you you know, especially down here in Texas or in the south, you're going to fish lakes that got flats. When I call flats, or shallow shallow water. The flats going to be uh, water that is just shallow. It could go here, I mean, our, our flats or our shallow water can go 300 yards out, you know. So you want to be able to cast far. You, I mean, you, you want to be able to. So that's why those big rod and reels.
stickers on his reels, so I'm just still checking them. Now, but another reason is because wind. Like I said, you you bank fishing. You go, you have to fish when it's windy. You have to. You just have to. And those little seven, eight foot rods, and you know, little reels with two ounce weights, they're not gonna cast into the wind. You're gonna go when it's blowing 20, 30 knots, and you're gonna try to throw those rods and reels, and the weight's gonna come back in your face. So it's gonna go 10, 20 yards. So you got, this is why we use, you know, I use these six rods and these, and these reels is to cast into the wind. Cause you're, you're bank fishing and you're fishing in the wind, you know? So that's one of the main reasons, you know, I use these big rods and reels. Now, now it's winter, I mean, that's just usually, you know, the key element to winter fishing, you know, lakes, so, but once I say springtime comes, I mean, that could be as early as, you know, not calendar spring, but, you know, mid-February, March, and April, catfishing can get just absolutely ridiculous. Um, you're going to get more days where it's going to be windy and sunny, and that's just going to, you know that south wind is south wind just brings that warmer you know warmer weather so it's gonna heat that it's gonna heat that shallow water up way faster the plankton the shad everything's gonna go there everything's gorging before they spawn now you can literally uh by paying attention to the weather i'm gonna stress weather a lot you can look at your you can look at your weather app and see in five days you know at two o'clock in the afternoon the catfish is gonna start biting that's how much you can get it down to a science when you start paying attention to the weather now if I look at my weather app in the spring and I see that you know if it's Monday I see Wednesday the south winds gonna start blowing Thursday the south winds gonna be blowing Friday the south winds gonna be blowing it's gonna be warmer and it's really blowing that first day is gonna be good that second day is gonna be better and the third day is gonna be phenomenal because by the time the second and third day come, it's a pattern. The plankton are already pushed up against the bank. The shad's are already established there. So that second and third day is gonna be really, really good. You know, the first day is good, but that second, third day, as long as it's consistent, I mean, it's, it, it could be, it could be phenomenal. Now, by then you can get bait pretty good in the spring. You can, you can find bait, you know, at your at your regular spot. And I mean by bait, I mean by shad, perch. Uh, Lafayette, if your lakes have them. Carp. Carp is a huge, you know, I don't understand why carp is not talked about as big as shad. Carp is a huge, it's an amazing bait. In the wintertime, I use carp. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, I, I, you catch carp, you can freeze them whole in the freezer and leave them in there for six months and they'll be good. Just leave them, you know, you can wrap them in some air, wrap them in a deep freezer. Carp be perfect. The win in the winter and the early spring, carp is amazing. Uh, bluegill is really good and then especially if you're fishing the, the lakes that got those hybrids or the stripers uh, I catch a ton a ton of stripers or hybrids or cut carp just tons of them. I mean you wouldn't believe it uh, but once you start getting the gizzards and I say once March the gizzards come in real good with the south wind you go to any bank where the wind's blowing hard on you throw your cast and you, you can catch a gizzard then you get into the gizzards and uh, the gizzard shad and that's Gizzard shad is good all the way through, you know, till about fall. It's top bait. I don't like carp in the summer. It gets mushy. It's not as good. Uh, winter time can be hard to catch a bait. So like I said, it's best to catch it in the fall. Get your carp, you know, and, and, and deep freeze your carp or your bluegills. Deep freeze it. Wrap it saran wrap. Do what you got to do. Because in the winter it can be hard to catch bait. You know, the only time places I catch bait in the winter time is early in the morning at night time around deep docks. That have lights, um, you might get some shad, but other than that, it's, it's, it's tough to have bait in the winter. Now, once uh, this transition period between, I would say, uh, spring and, and the summer when, when the catfish start spawning, and it could get tough in the bank to catch them. Now, I fish shallow uh, all spring, and uh, when they start spawning, I would say, depending on where you at, you know, May, it could be June. As long as it's windy, you still can catch catfish from the bank, even when they're spawning, because some are spawning and some are done. You know, so I, I never fish deep in the spring or uh, early, early summer. They usually spawning, and if they're gonna bite, they're gonna bite.
quite shallow when it's going to be. Uh, the summertime is when I catch the most big ones. I mean, spring, but summertime, you can pattern blues from the bank uh, real good in the summertime. In the daytime, if it could be 100 degrees, you can catch blues deep still. You still can catch blues deep. In the middle of the day, you fish deep, uh, and you use different types of rigs to catch them. And I'll show I'll show you some different rigs to catch them in the summertime too. Because you got that summertime, which I know a lot of you heard of, is that uh, no oxygen at a certain Nighttime come, catching deep. I like to fish shallow. The, the water can be uh, hot, nasty hot, and those blues, big ones, will be shallow gorging because they're done spawning. So they're they're gorging. They want to gorge. Now what you can do is that uh, at about right before it gets dark, you can go shallow and look at the water. And if you see shad, you know shad and perch or bluegill, tilapia flicking on the water shallow, them cats gonna be there at nighttime. Now. The thing with cat fish for cats in the summer shallow is that you got to be patient because the water's hot. Sometimes they feed, as soon as it gets dark, they'll start gorging and you catch them all night. I mean, you, big ones, medium, small ones. But a lot of times they won't turn on. I mean, you know, this last year we caught them, they wouldn't start biting until 12 o'clock. 12 or 3 o'clock. Whole school would come in, you just know them. But it seems like they'll wait till that water cools off just a little bit, then they'll come on that flat and just gorge. So you want to be patient if you're fishing shallow at nighttime at a spot because uh, you know you gotta wait for them to come. You can fish for them deep, and I've caught tons of them deep in, in the summer too at nighttime. Just you know, real good. But a new pattern I've learned is fishing shallow in the summer at night has just been phenomenal. I mean, it's been amazing. You transition into the, the fall period. It can be hit or miss. It can be great. It can be bad because one day they can be deep, one day they can be shallow. You you, you, know, you never know. You know. My thing is that when it's windy in the fall and it's cool, I fish shallow. When it's windy and cool, I fish shallow. When it's, you know, because fall you can get a summer, you can get a sunny day and you can get a cool day. But, you know, sunny and not too cold, I fish deep. You can catch fish deep, shallow in the summer, in the fall. You know, most lakes up north or more east coast fall catfishing is way better than it is in the south because, you know, in the east coast, North, they'll gorge big time before the free, you know, before the water gets really cold. Down south, they don't really have to gorge in the fall because you know they can feed winter all winter long pretty easily. But the fall, still, they're still pretty good fishing in the south. And then you transition over into back to the winter. Now, one of the tips that I uh, that's real important is that when you cast your rods out, you want to. So you want to cast right back there. So many times, every time I fish is that uh, you can cast your rod out and have another one you cast right next to it, and one rod will get hit. And I know it's happened to you. One rod get hit. You catch ten catfish on one rod. The one that you throw right next to it won't get touched. Like why? It's something that you're doing with that bait. It's something there. Something why that, those fish are related. You always want to pick something to it. And if you get something there. Keep doing that same spot because it's the reason you catch no fish there. Hopefully, I get some little takedowns here for you.
my rods in. Two rods in. Uh, uh, nice cat. Take a look at the gear I'm using today. I got the Cast King Rover 60 right here. Uh, like I said, this reel here is like $55. And it's not as smooth as the Abu Garcia. Uh, and the clicker is not as good, but it, it, it casts great and it reels, everything's good, it's got a big handle. Uh, I like it so far. $55, you can't beat it. And the breakwater, Austria Angler Bass Pro Shops rod. $100. Amazing rod. Nice little design here. I love this rod. 12 foot. Now let's take a look at how I tune these reels to get your baits up to 100 yards farther out than what you usually do. Alright, mainly all bait casters, the Abu Garcia, 6500C3s, the Cat Max reel, this reel, and the Calcutta, they all have these little three little pins, three little pins here, three little pins. They easily come off, you just twist them off. your fingers when you tighten these back up don't tighten them too tight comes off nothing comes loose and falls out comes off you can just set this aside that's what it looks like mostly all the reels will look like this but some will have six of these things right here they'll have six up some will have four this one has six, this one has two. Now, usually on these, it's two, it, it'll be little little uh, plastic little squares. You just take them off. It's that simple. You just take them off, put them in the ziplock bag, put them up. That's all you gotta do. Or you can push them down. They're just plastic. You can Google it, and you'll see all the reels that have a little plastic. You push them down, that's, that's turning the brakes off, okay? That's turning them off. Just if you, I just take them off. Like I said, some reels have six of these little things. Just take them off, put them in a ziplock bag. You took all the brakes off, okay? Now, I only recommend doing that if you've been using bait cast reels, all right? Now, if you haven't been using bait cast reels, you want to transition, I would say get a reel like this or 6500 C3 or any reel, leave uh, leave the standard brakes on three. If it has six, leave three of them more. If it has four, leave two of them more. All right, and then do what you know is recommended. Okay, uh, you get your weight and your line. And you, you, you know you push the clicker or you you, know, you release the line, and you let it drop slow and steady. Once it drops slow and steady, you got your real tune. You start practice casting. Now I'm not gonna go over casting techniques. Uh, you can watch YouTube's on video on you know on, uh, on how to do casting techniques but I will say if you're fishing if you're fishing I would recommend just doing the on the ground cast it's simple it gets it out far you know uh, all those other casts pendulum casts where you're twirling and whipping and all that stuff I don't do all that uh, you know I got other rods next to me I'm fishing with people on the ground just put it there you cast it out it's simple uh, I would recommend doing that but you can you know you can try all the different ones see what works best for you um, but if you haven't used a bait caster, that's what I would do. I would just watch the videos on YouTube and it'll show you how to cast them. But if you do, take the brakes off, just put this back on, and start with, you know, uh, you still can you still can use the brake. I mean, just because you took the brakes off doesn't mean you have no brakes. You still have the little knob here that you can uh, tighten down. And you can tighten it down all the way, and, it, and, and you cast it, and you won't backlash. You know, so I would recommend doing that. Uh, you know, tighten your your tension knob to where you get a practice cast, and once you get the hang of it, loosen it a little bit more. And once you get the hang of it, loosen a little bit more. And once you get the hang of it, loosen a little bit more until you get it where you want to. Now you got your main line. This is 17 pound line right here. You use any any brand you want. 17 pound mono. This is what I'm using. All right. Now you can't cast the five ounce weight on 17 pound mono like I'm casting. It'll snap to smithereens, so you got to tie a shock leader. 
So what I do is I got the 17 pound mono. And what I do is I tie that mono to braids, 50 pound braids. And you can use bright knot, any knot, you can Google, they got knots for you to Google on how to tie mono to braid. Practice it and then it becomes second hand. So 17, I tie it to 50 pound braids, all right? Then what you do is you reel about 10 yards of it on your reel. So it looks like that. So now when you catch, you put your thumb on that line and it won't snap because you know you get the pound break. Then you just tie your you just tie your your braid to your leader. Always use a mono leader. Never use braid leader. They'll twist and tangle and get and they'll cut your leader, your line, and always use a mono leader. So and you just tie to a mono leader. And you're good to go. And I'll just show a simple cast on how I, a simple cast on how I cast. As you can see, this is full, and this is a big reel. Too much lines left, and that's not even trying to really throw it hard. That's just, you know, half, half time. This one on camera, that's a nice one. Nice Alright, so here we got a couple different ways I cut the bait up. Uh let's start with here. We got a little bait like this. Let's cut the tail off and you fillet it backwards. You know, on both sides. That gets the skin. That gets the scent out. Hook them through the head. Uh, and that's when you got little, you know, little bluegills like that. Now, it's winter. I couldn't catch no big gizzard, so this is the biggest shad I got. But the heads is my go-to bait almost all the time. Maybe except the early spring. The head is just—it's amazing. I've seen people throw the heads away. I just—I go crazy. But the head, uh, it's go-to bait. Hook them through, hook them through the lips, toss them out there. Now this. I always cut it a special way. Uh, I cut it in a way as to where you got uh, the gut pocket stays in. Look at that. And you just, you know, make a cut in the head and then trim it up and you get that. You got the fillet. Now I like this long fillet like this in the spring because you you're fishing windy in a spring shallow so you throw it out there you hook it up up here and when it hits the when it gets out there the waves are gonna you know flip it around and it's gonna it's gonna look like flashing flashing so you catch a lot of hybrid stripers a lot of catfish in the spring with fillets all year long with fillets but definitely spring another fillet just thicker a little bit thicker and then this another head piece but i cut it in the ways to where the gut pockets is in there still. See that? It's got put some put some holes in there, get the out. And like I said, if I had a bigger bait, I'd be using bigger bait, but it's just it's winter. Yeah, it's hard to catch bait. The rig I like to use just don't even have a name. I just made it up. Start with so go in the weight, so go in the weight, about two feet of line. That's simple, right? Just start with this. Then you get in another piece of line. Now for leaders, I'll use 50 pound. 50 pound test. Uh, the standard, that's what I like to use. And I, I, I tie that my 50 pound leaders 
to my main line and it's a shock leader. Now I use bait casters so I'm using 17 pound test. You can use 20, you can use 15. Of course 17 pound cats on 15 pound test. And you just gotta play your drag. So now you run a line through that. Take a bead. After you put that line through the swivel, take a bead, put a bead on. Then you hook. So now we get into different hooks and sizes and kinds and all that, you know, in a little bit. Eight eye Gamagachi hook right here. Circle. So now you see right here, just like that. I put the line through the swivel with the bead and the hook. Right? Then what you want to do is uh, take about uh, four or five feet of line right there. So now you got this. You get another swivel. Also with hook hooks, you want to use a snell knot because you get a better hookup ratio. Don't know if I said that yet, but you do. And these tag ends, I'll cut them later. So this is what you got. It's like this in the swivel. Now, with this, the bait's right next to the line. So when you cast this out, it's not going to be helicopter. It's going to be right there, right there. See that? Wait, cut through the wind, wait right there, keep going. It's not gonna be helicopter and everywhere, you know. But the amazing thing about this also is that you still can you get the Carolina rig aspect. Aspect. You cast it out, hits the bottom, let slack out. What happen is the fish is gonna pick it up and look at this. Look at that. Look at that. He just swims, he don't feel nothing, he don't feel nothing, he don't feel nothing. Then he'll feel it. So you still get the Carolina aspect out of this rig and you can you and you can make it a Santa Cooper rig also look at this take a float put the float So look at that. So what's gonna happen is when you cast it out, like I said, you reel it up until you feel the weight, then you let the line out. When you let the line out, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna go all the way up. That's about four feet off the bottom. You know, that's about four feet off the bottom. When the fish hits it, it swims off, bam, it's just snatched. Or if you want to, you can have it one feet off the bottom. You can just fish like this with it tight. Like I said, you cast it out, let it hit the bottom, feel the weight. You let slack out, floats up, up in the water column. It's like that. And that's just the rig I come up with. But this is what I, I use. I don't use the float that much, but this is what I use. It's right here. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to show you a couple rigs here. First, I'm going to start off with the, the rig that's probably the most famous. Swivel, put some line. You can, you, 
use it for more than this. Put more lines in this and the hook. You don't want to put like three, four feet of this because it'll helicopter. That's why I don't like using this Carolina rig. Um, just because if you're trying to get a farm, um, when you cast it, it's going to helicopter. Your bait's going to helicopter. It's going to slow the cast down. Your how far your your bait goes is going to be decreased when you use this rig. If you're casting far. Now if you're casting short, you don't need to cast that, that, that far. Spend more if you want to get your bait off the bottom. You can do that by attaching a float called a Sandy Cooper rig. And that's all you do, you just put a float on there. When you cast it out, reel up until you feel your weight. That's another thing, too. When you cast your rods out, you put them in your rod holders, you get them set. Don't pick your rod up and reel three feet and drag it on the bottom. You're just going to get hung. I see it all the time. Um, and when you're fishing, if you get a bite, don't go run to your right and get a bite, pick it up, and mess with it. You're gonna miss the fish most of the time. Wait for that rod to bend over or it lean if you're using a different rod holder. And I'll show you those rod holders here soon. But don't don't be picking it up, messing with it, and dragging it on the bottom because you'll get hung. So a way to get this boat, this bait to suspend off the bottom. Like I said, especially in the summer and winter, if you're fishing deep, if you're fishing deep, you cast it out, reel up until you feel weight. When you feel the weight, let out line. When you let out line, it's gonna float up. How much line you let out, how far it's gonna float up. So it'll float all the way up. Just depending on how much line you let out. And then you got it off two, three, four, five, five, six, seven feet off the bottom. You know where the blues can find it if they're suspended. And you can find out blues on the bottom when you catch one is if they got mud on them. It won't be like blobs of mud, but you'll see like brown mud on them. That means they're sticking to the bottom. That's the Carolina rig. So this is the Sandy Cooper rig with a float. Take the float off. Carolina rig. I don't like using it because it helicopters when you cast it, but it's a good rig. Alright, now here's the spot I was fishing today. You can see there's a channel over here to the left. And then this is the point. There's another channel. Or a cove. We say, we say that's a cove. And this is the point. And in the winter, definitely, you can get on points, you know, points that, that are pretty much, they extend out into the water. What happens is when the wind blows, you know, north to south or east to west, it'll blow across the points. And the points don't just stop where we're at. It, it continues underneath the water. We don't see the rest of how the point goes. So it'll push across those points and, and, and push the bait fish and the cats to get up on them to feed. So points are good. Even, you know, if you have a point where the shallow water is good. I always try to get the points. And when you fish in anywhere, especially if you find flats or shallow water, and you can find creeks next to it or coves next to where you're fishing. Like it's a cove right here next to where I'm fishing. Now, the wind that blows into that cove, the bait fish go up in there real thick. It blow, it blow the bait fish in there. Catfish will follow, and you can just have a field day. Same thing as you're fishing shallow water. If you have a creek or a cove next to where you're fishing in shallow water, especially in the spring, uh, if it's blowing into that cove, you can just catch tons of catfish. You'll put rods out on the flats and you put some in the cove to see if they move them in that cove or that creek. Like when it rains in the winter uh, and that warm water starts feeding out the creek into the lake, the catfish will be, you know, in that creek or at the mouth of that creek because the water's warm. The bait fish will be there. So try to look for those areas. You can, and you can always uh, find areas. You know, use the Nav Navionics app. Uh, it's like ten dollars for that, but it's it's well worth it. You know, it, you you look at you look at you locate your lake, 
you pull it up and you see the topo or the topography of the map or the lake the contour uh contour of the lake you know the, it, it shows you how deep the water is if there's a uh, road bed if there's humps now uh, the Navionis app shows you everything and that way you can choose a way you want to fish right. at so we're gonna get into these rod holders and uh why you probably gonna st start seeing a lot more people use these rod holders uh these rod holders are good because of the wind number one when it's windy like i said for the thousand time you're fishing in the wind you catch fish in the bank you're fishing in the wind your rod is way lower on the water level so you you, you know the wind's not pushing loops everywhere now that's if, that's if the winds you know coming across you you know if it's coming across you anyway it won't it won't you know it won't create loops in your line also when you get a bite you just pick your rod up just pick it up, snatch, you ain't got to worry about trying to get out the rod holder and all that stuff. And and, and you never lose, you know, I, the main concern with these is that, oh, you know, the fish take your rod. I know because the fish hits it, he's going to bend the rod over. And if it's a real big fish, he'll pull, but your reel's going to get stuck in that U. And that's it, it can't go nowhere. It's going to stick in that U. I've, I've used rod holders for years and caught, you know, big, big catfish, 50, 60, 70 pound catfish. Uh... With these rod holders and sometimes you'd be sitting there and you you know you hit clink and you look over and your reel is stuck there and your rod is straight out and and, the, and then the catfish is pulling drag you just go pick it up and, and fight the fish or if you're scared you know it's still scared you just set your clicker on and set it loose when the catfish takes it the clicker goes you'll pick the rod up but they're just you know they're better they're light too that's one thing you 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 know you carrying gear everywhere walking you know walking 50 60 100 yards these rod holders are light also so i didn't get a chance to uh record a lot of fish i caught uh, a total of nine uh here's a picture of them <laughs> 